Rhapsodize Audio presents I'm Nobody, Who Are You? An Emily Dickinson Rhapsody Performed by Rosemary Orlando In 1862, Emily Dickinson sent four poems to Thomas Wentworth Higginson of the Atlantic Monthly. The magazine invited young writers to submit their works. Thomas Wentworth Higginson was a professional man of letters and an essayist. He rejected Emily's poems due to their meter, poor rhyme, and unconventional style. The irony of this is after Emily's death in 1886, her sister Lavinia found hundreds of Emily's poems. She took them to Mabel Loomis Todd, the wife of a local professor. Todd then contacted Higginson for assistance. Higginson went on to publish Emily Dickinson's poetry, along with Todd's smoothing out meter, rhymes, and line arrangements. The early publications differ from the now published work, which accepts the celebration of the well-known dash. As Emily wrote, when I take a breath, my hand does the same. Her poetry is usually divided into four different categories, life, love, nature, and time and eternity. Life I'm nobody. Who are you? Are you nobody, too? Then there's a pair of us. Don't tell. They'd banish us, you know. How dreary to be somebody, how public like a frog, to tell your name the live-long day to an admiring bog. If I can stop one heart from breaking, I shall not live in vain. If I can ease one life the aching, or cool one pain, or help one fainting robin unto his nest again, I shall not live in vain. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul, and sings the tune without the words, and never stops at all. And sweetest in the gale is heard, And sore must be the storm That could abash the little bird That kept so many warm. I've heard it in the chillest land, And on the strangest sea, Yet never, in extremity, It asked a crumb of me. A word is dead when it is said, Some say. I say it just begins to live that day. Surgeons must be very careful when they take the knife. Underneath their fine incisions stirs the culprit, life. My life closed twice before its close. It yet remains to see if immortality unveil a third event to me, so huge, so hopeless to conceive, as these that twice befell. Parting is all we know of heaven, and all we need of hell. Love Going to him, happy letter, tell him, tell him the page I didn't write, tell him I only said the syntax and left the verb and the pronoun out. Tell him just how the fingers hurried, then how they waited slow, slow, slow. And then you wished you had eyes in your pages so you could see what moved them so. Tell him it wasn't a practiced writer, you guessed from the way the sentence toiled. You could hear the bodice tug behind you as if it held but the might of a child. You almost pitied it, you, it worked so, tell him. No, you may quibble there, for it would split his heart to know it, and then you and I were silenter. Tell him night finished before we finished, and the old clock kept neighing, day, and you got sleepy and begged to be ended. What could it hinder so to say? Tell him just how she sealed you, cautious. But if he asks where you are hid until tomorrow, happy letter, 
gesture, coquette, and shake your head. Heart, we will forget him, you and I, tonight. You may forget the warmth he gave, I will forget the light. When you have done, pray tell me that I my thoughts may dim, haste, lest while you're lagging I may remember him. Wild nights, wild nights, were I with thee. Wild nights should be our luxury. Futile the winds to a heart in port, done with the compass, done with the chart, rowing in Eden, ah, the sea, might I but moor to-night in thee. The moon is distant from the sea, and yet with amber hands she leads him, docile as a boy, along appointed sands. He never misses a degree, obedient to her eye, he comes just so far toward the town, just so far goes away. O oh, Signor, thine the amber hand, and mine the distant sea. Obedient to the least command thine eyes impose on me. Nature I'll tell you how the sun rose, a ribbon at a time. The steeple swam in amethyst. The news like squirrels ran. The hills untied their bonnets. The bobolinks begun. Then I said softly to myself, That must have been the sun. But how he set, I know not. There seemed a purple style Which little yellow boys and girls Were climbing all the while, Till when they reached the other side, a dominie in grey put gently up the evening bars and led the flock away. The butterfly's assumption gown in Chrysophry's apartments hung this afternoon put on. How condescending to descend and be of buttercups the friend in a New England town. The pedigree of honey does not concern the bee. A clover any time to him is aristocracy. A bird came down the walk. He did not know I saw. He bit an angle worm in halves and ate the fellow raw. And then he drank a dew from a convenient grass. And then hopped sideways to the wall to let a beetle pass. He glanced with rapid eyes that hurried all abroad. They look like frightened beads, I thought. He stirred his velvet head like one in danger. Cautious. I offered him a crumb, and he unrolled his feathers and rode him softer home than oars divide the ocean. Too silver for a seam, or butterflies, off banks of noon, leap, flashless, as they swim. A narrow fellow in the grass occasionally rides. You may have met him, did you not? His note as sudden is. The grass divides as with a comb, a spotted shaft is seen. And then it closes at your feet and opens further on. He likes a boggy acre, a floor too cool for corn. Yet when a child and barefoot... I more than once at morn have passed, I thought, a whiplash on braiding in the sun, when stooping to secure it, it wrinkled and was gone. Several of nature's people I know, and they know me, I feel for them a transport of cordiality. But never met this fellow, attended or alone, without a tighter breathing and zero at the bone. Time and Eternity There's been a death in the opposite house, as lately as today. I know it by the numb look such houses have all way. 
The neighbors rustle in and out. The doctor drives away. A window opens like a pod, abrupt, mechanically. Somebody flings a mattress out. The children hurry by. They wonder if it died on that. I used to when a boy. The minister goes stiffly in as if the house were his. And he owned all the mourners now, and little boys besides. And then the milliner, and the man of the appalling trade, to take the measure of the house. There'll be that dark parade of tassels and of coaches soon. It's easy as a sign, the intuition of the news in just a country town. I have not told my garden yet, lest that they should conquer me. I have not quite the strength now to break it to the bee. I will not name it in the street, for shops would stare that I, so shy, so very ignorant, should have the face to die. The hillsides must not know it, where I have rambled so, nor tell the loving forest the day that I shall go, nor lisp it at the table, nor heedless by the way hint that within the riddle one will walk today. She died. This was the way she died. And when her breath was done, took up her simple wardrobe and started for the sun. Her little figure at the gate the angels must have spied, since I could never find her upon the mortal side. I never saw a moor, I never saw the sea, yet know I how the heather looks, and what a wave must be. I never spoke with God, nor visited in heaven, yet certain am I of the spot as if the chart were given. The grave my little cottage is, where, keeping house for thee, I make my parlor orderly, and lay the marble tea, for two divided, briefly, a cycle it may be, till everlasting life unite in strong society. I tie my hat, I crease my shawl, life's little duties do, precisely, as the very least were infinite to me. I put new blossoms in the glass and throw the old away. I push a petal from my gown that anchored there. I weigh the time twill be six o'clock. I have so much to do, and yet existence, some way back, stopped, struck my ticking through. Therefore, we do life's labor, though life's reward be done with scrupulous exactness to hold our senses on. The name they dropped upon my face with water in the country church, Emily Elizabeth, is finished using now, and they can put it with my dolls, my childhood, and the string of spools I finished threading. Because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. The carriage held but just ourselves and immortality. We slowly drove. He knew no haste, and I had put away my labor and my leisure, too, for his civility. We passed the school where children played, their lessons scarcely done. We passed the fields of gazing grain. We passed the setting sun. We paused before a house that seemed a swelling of the ground. The roof was scarcely visible, the cornice but a mound. Since then to centuries, but each feels shorter than the day I first surmise the horses' heads were toward eternity.
This has been a production of Rhapsodize Audio, featuring guest rhapsode Rosemary Orlando. This production was engineered and edited by Bob Gonzalez. Rhapsodize Audio is a division of Rhapsodize, a non-commercial cultural initiative dedicated to producing and promoting the dramatic performance of classic poetry.